Hello everyone and welcome to the opening ceremony of Love by 2024. I'm your host PS and I have two very well-known guests with me today to help me go through the opening ceremony. On this side we have uh, Gigabates. It's uh, he's a newcomer. He only started uh, last year, but he's already been doing quite a lot of things uh, in the demo scene and he started with size coding uh, and we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. And on that side we have Helmut which has been around for like 10 years now, but it's already considered a legend, especially in size coding in particular, which Love Byte is all about size coding. So thank you so much uh, to have you both. How you how you both doing? You feeling up to the task of doing the opening show, Helmut? Yeah, of course. Sure. Why not? Let's get onto the questions. Like, <laughs> right. Awesome. Uh, Gigabates, I'll start with you. Like, you're a newcomer and you started with Tiny Code Christmas, which is somehow Love Byte related. So, how, how mm -hmm. has this whole ride been for you of getting into size coding and, and demo scene overall? Yeah, it's been awesome. So, I guess I've been kind of following the demo scene from, from the outside for, for a long time. I was kind of aware of it, but definitely the, the kind of size coding thing was something that let me. Kind of get involved in a way that you don't have to be part of a group you can do something on your own you can do a solo production without needing people to do graphics people to do music and it just yeah it made it really accessible and kind of gave me that push to actually start being active and get, getting involved in it i mean while you've been assimilated to desire so you're now doing full-fledged demos and everything so so uh, really cool to see uh your your track record uh i was i wanted to ask you something in particular how did you think that the get ready thing worked and tiny code christmas overall do you think it's like a good pathway are you thinking that we'll have some interesting new talent submissions this year as well yeah definitely so but the the, the get ready was was the thing that you know, I released my first first production in that this time last year, and it was yeah, it was definitely a lot more accessible than being being part of the main competition and just having that that opportunity to to submit something without that kind of high barrier to entry. And yeah, really looking forward to seeing all the people who've been who've been doing Tiny Code Christmas. Hopefully, some of them will enter and see what they've been up to. Yeah, there were quite a few interesting stuff. I saw the showcase uh, before at, uh, at Tillage Effects and it was really, really cool. Hope to see some entries from that as well. Um, we should probably explain what tiny size coding stuff is exactly. Helbu, do you want to take a go at that? What, what exactly, what is uh, size coding and what is tiny intros in particular compared to the rest of the demo scene stuff? Okay, I'll have like two explanations. One is it's like minimal art, like digitally minimal art. It's the first one. It's pretty simple. And the other one is like, if you want to explain it to people who don't know anything, I'm trying to go with something like this. Imagine you are a master painter like uh, Van Gogh or somebody, and you have, a, you have a pupil, a student. He's very fast in painting, but he's also very dumb. So now you get a task. You can like steer his hand and try to tell him concepts. And you have to do it in as minimal instructions as possible. Like you can tell your student uh, painter to move your hand there and then color it red, then move it there and do it green. Or maybe you can tell them the concept of a rectangle. But you have to know your student is quite dumb, but he's very fast. He doesn't know any concepts. He doesn't know what a tree is or what a, what a cloud is, but he does know what a pixel is or maybe what a line is. So now your task is to, to um, transport your idea, your art, in as minimum inst instructions as possible. Like you have like 10 commands and you have to paint a picture with that. That is, would be a, my very high level explanation of that. Because I figured like any any more low level explanations uh, are like- It's too technical, yeah. It's too technical, it's too long for that. Like That was a really a good explanation patient. actually. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, another question that I had for you, uh, and this applies to both of you, how would you uh, get a newcomer to get into size coding? Like, like what is the best place to get started? I guess Gigabyte, you went through this process, so maybe you have some insight on this. Yeah, I mean, as we kind of already mentioned, Tiny Code Christmas was the thing that drew me into it. And I think that the aspects of it that really kind of pulled me in was the just sharing your progress with other people, being on Discord, being on Mastodon, and just posting your daily updates and just doing something small every day. That it definitely kind of gets past that, that fear of putting something out there, just doing lots of little things. 
Yeah, so share your stuff like even if help. it's not ready. You know, just share with others, get mm-hmm. some tips. That's a very good, uh, good uh, pro tip. Um, some resources we should probably mention: sizecoding.org is the wiki where we have all the liver- different little pro tips on how to get started for the different platforms. There's also the size coding Discord. That is also very active with people and separated by different platforms. So if you like to target uh, fantasy consoles, if you like to target old school machines like Atari, Spectrum, uh, Amiga, all those kind of things. There's like different uh, channels there for each one, and you can get some uh, some contact with other people as well. Uh, Helmut, any other pro tips that you can think of or people who want to get started in size coding? Well, there's an archive. I think it's called Hardcode. It collects everything from the 90s to right now. There's two versions of it, so just there are archives. And I would like recommend to study the masters. Like, I mean, what I perceive as a master, for example, Jirjola and uh, Frag from Square Root, because they, these uh, guys have figured out stuff long before I did, like 2008 to and up on to to 2014 or something. So just look at what other, others have done, like study their code and um, connect to them, like drop an email, come to the Discord. If you don't understand anything, just ask, because we are, as a community, we are very willing to give you the information because we, you know, we need newcomers to to enter the scene and we are willing to give you all, all your needs. There's, you know, this is the spirit of the scene. We give everything if somebody's asking. Yeah, it's another of the questions that I had lined up for for both of you, like how the tiny size coding relates to other adjacent scenes. You know, there are a lot of people who are coding stuff to fit on a a single Twitter uh, tweet uh, message. Uh, There are some... you know, shader toy, different different kind of uh, things. Uh, fantasy consoles as well, uh, starting to have more tiny size coding stuff. Um, what could we do in terms of the demo scene to get these scenes interested in what we're doing? Also, music, for example, like we're having tiny executable music this year, which is another uh, new compo that we have. Um, how, how, what more could we do than what we've been doing already? Anyone has any brilliant ideas that you thought of that we could be doing some more outreach from? Yeah, I mean, I guess just supporting the platforms that those people are using. If people are doing something in P5.js um, or whatever it may be, then finding a way that we can incorporate that into a category. Um, yeah, and just trying to kind of meet them where they are with, with tech that they're currently using. Yeah, some cross pollination, as we already mentioned a few times before. Um, okay, let's move on with this opening show and go through the schedule of what we have lined up for the for the party uh, today. Uh, well, we already started the party uh, Friday. Um, we already had a few playlists showing. We already had the the countdown, which was massive effort like 40 different intros that we had uh throughout uh, january leading up to to love bite uh we're, you're watching the opening show right now so you probably know what it is already uh we still have lined up for you at 10 to have the new talent uh competition that will uh, take place so anyone who uh, has never been on the top three um results of any coding competition like with themselves coding they are welcome to participate on this special competition and we're very much very much looking forward to see what the new new talent can do on on the demo scene in tiny size in tiny size coding is uh, as we mentioned before it's mostly uh, aimed at people who participated on tiny code christmas not exclusively you can if you didn't even if you didn't participate uh, you're still uh, welcome to participate uh, too late for you to submit stuff now because the compo is already happening, but I hope you stay tuned and I hope you pay attention. Last year at Get Ready, we had a quite very good uh, competition, so I'm I'm very much looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. Helmut, do you have any thoughts on the new talent competition? Uh, I love to see it. Like uh, Occasionally, I watch uh, all these uh, newcomers uh, try themselves out in the first tries, and I see a lot of new names, and I see a lot of new talent, like like the name suggests, it's the new talents. So, like People from other scenes, like cross-correlated to demo scene, are very capable. They just don't know demo scene. So if you get them the right tools and like some ideas and a channel to, to talk, then you see them unfold. Like It's not exactly black magic for a coder to, to dive into it. And uh, I, I I get a smile each time I see somebody like grasping the concepts and like putting out some 64 or 128 bytes uh, 
uh, effect, which looks nice. And I think like, uh, yes, our like network, it, it worked and some people are getting getting to the point. So I'm I'm actually a bit hyped to see what they come up with because there is a lot of talent. And if I like five or six people from the last recent uh, Christmas events, if they uh, pull up their maximum game, then it's, it's, a, it's a decent combo already. Yeah. Yeah, and some people were even like trying the time called Christmas on different platforms that they were exploring or like new languages because why not? Let's say if we're learning how to do some graphics programming, let's try it on a different language and a different platform. So very curious to see how that, uh, if they will participate uh, on this combo in particular. Uh, Gigabytes, I know you're biased towards this combo, but anything you're looking forward to it in particular, being like that you were uh, your winner of last year, right? Or were you second place? Second I was place, second I on that one, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess just seeing some new faces and seeing new approaches to things, maybe people coming from different scenes, different backgrounds, bring a different perspective on things. So yeah, hopefully kind of mix things up a little bit and uh, different, All right. different takes on what we do. After the new talent competition, we'll have at 11 the Byte Jam with eight people participating and a cool DJ set by Mint Imperial. And round up tonight, we'll have a little night program showing some intro shows. Uh, we'll repeat the Tiny Cold Christmas Showcase as well that was shown at Tillage Effects, and uh, we'll have a nice time throughout the evening. Saturday will be one of the main days that we'll have. Things will kick off around 10 a.m. with a morning relaxation playlist for your uh, morning relaxation uh, pleasure for you while you watch, while you have some coffee, you can watch some tiny intros. Um, then we'll have uh, a year in size coding with me that I prepared going through all of the intros of uh, the year and highlighting uh, the best ones. Uh, for you to see. We'll have a seminar being prepared by uh, Poi, a legend in tiny size coding as well. He's going to walk you through how to do some uh, optimization stuff for uh, JavaScript, I believe. Uh, around noon, we'll have an 8-bit uh, showcase. So any And showcase being new productions, not old productions. So anything new that people have done in, in 8 bytes. 8 bytes is ridiculous. Like it's this, the, the, <laughs> these many bytes. It's these. Like, how the hell can you even do anything graphical on this? It's like, turn on graphical mode. Oh, I'm running out of bytes now. Uh, so it's really hard to do something. Most of them are just noise glitches in some way, but it, there's always something uh, a little interesting in that. We had something similar uh, last year as well, as well, for 8 bytes and 16 bytes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, around one, we'll have uh, another intro show of, uh, and these shows are the ones who highlight previously released uh, tiny size coding intros. At two, we will have the Byte Beat music competition, which last year was quite interesting. We had a lot of interesting uh, releases there. I don't know if any of you have been following, trying to make some music on uh, with Byte Beat stuff. Uh, have any of you experimented with that? Yeah, of course, if I may answer the question, I, of course, I did like for MIDI and ByteBeat uh, separately. I think uh, two years ago, I did one of those, but I, I figured like other people are way better than, than I am. <laughs> like I'm really looking forward to, to those competing again, because what they come up with is like ridiculously like this is music. It's like really 8-bit music to, to me in certain cases. They have like drums and, uh, and, and snare bass kick effects. I mean, I know those to to a certain degree but uh it it you listen to it and are like okay i'm i'm done i will not compete there anymore <laughs> it's, it's too good for me i'm looking forward to it but i think i might learn a few tricks a few new ones yeah yeah last year was really interesting so a yeah, lot of yeah. good stuff yeah. um gigabase have you ever tried any any music making either in byte beat or tiny executable um so my amiga pro um last year the 512 byte one had some form of music in it and yeah, it's it's a real challenge just to get any kind of sound out of an Amiga at that kind of size. So yeah, definitely really impressed with what people are doing. Then at three o'clock in the afternoon, we'll have a set by GoTo80, which I made the visuals for using my Intertronics VJ80 tool, which turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with that. I'm very interested to see what you guys think about it. And then at four, we'll have the tiny executable music. So how it differs from the byte beat is that on byte beat you are using this program pre-prepared program where you just shift bytes between certain uh, buffer um, and you can do some operands on it and tiny executable music is uh, the other way around you do a full executable 
uh, that has to run on DOS or Amiga or whatever platform you want, uh, and it needs to output sound. And you only have 256 bytes uh, to do some sound out of it. So it's a different kind of challenge. Um, you can do some synths on it, some vague amount of synths. You can abuse some MIDI stuff if you're using DOS. Help me, do you have a lot of experience trying to do some, squeeze some sounds out of uh, uh, DOS for your intros? Uh, what are you looking forward to to this competition? And how much does 256 bytes hold? Because usually on your intros, you have to use like a quarter of that <laughs> to do sound. So yeah. what do you think about like, it? 256 is, uh, is more than enough for, for music, actually. Like in the last intro uh, that I did for function, the farewell intro, I think it was 64 bytes for the music or something. Like a melody uh, is easily captured in that amount. And if you have samples like in MIDI, you just have to trigger the notes actually and or the drums samples or whatever. So 256 is actually a lot. And even if you... Uh, consider... There's a caveat on this competition that there is no MIDI allowed though. On a, then on a it's a different a different yeah. story. So then you're uh, forced to use these soft synths or code your own synths. Yeah, okay. I, I think yeah, I, I've read that. I was a bit confused actually because for me it's like it was, would be even too 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 much space for me. That is, yeah, I just I just double checked <laughs> now because I was thinking, oh, wasn't there some rule? Let me double check and yeah, yeah. it says here so, no MIDI allowed. Yeah, because that's uh, that's uh, low brain and like MIDI is like you have eight or ten bytes for yeah. putting out a note or a sound. You have a police it's siren cheating. and eight bytes. It's it's cheating. cheating. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's really easy. Uh, but byte, uh, if it's uh, to, supposed to be a byte bit like uh, since, then it gets interesting. And uh, again, it's a domain I do not excel in. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to the to the people who are who are and like pushing the limits. And I'm um, I'm waiting to be blown away actually because I I, I have the, the suspicion that somebody will put out something which will make my jaw drop. And I'm looking forward to that. I think you can do some slightly more advanced stuff than on ByteBeat uh, because you have more control of the sound waves that you can use and not just shift stuff around. So I think we will hear more actual... <laughs> I, I it's, it's a bit weird to say, but more like uh, more soft synth sounding. Like you, you, I think we will hear more stuff like that. But I'm really curious to see what people will come up with and, and try to do. Uh, Gigabytes, do you have any prognostics for this competition at all? Have you considered participating on it? Um, I haven't considered participating. I mean, I think the really challenging part is that at that kind of size, you can't just work with a musician and just say, you know, not together some music for me. It has to be the coder. It has to be using your own engine. You have to be working really, really closely with, with someone who actually has that musical ability. So I think that makes it a lot harder. Um, but yeah, really, really excited to see what people come up with. At five o'clock, we will have the tiny executable graphics, which is you have to uh, code uh, whatever you want to be shown on screen with a maximum of uh, 500 and, uh, 256 bytes allowed. We'll have uh, both entries for old school platforms and for uh, high end slash fantasy console uh, platforms as well. A lot of interesting stuff was released uh, last year, which really set a very interesting tone on what you what you can do. Uh, you have a little bit more size than if you were doing animated things, uh, but this category specifically for doing a single frame. You have a certain time period where you can render the entire frame, but since you have some extra bytes compared to animated stuff, you can do a little bit more filler filling material and and do a. A better composition overall. Let's see. Well, we had a lot of good, interesting uh, entries. Uh, Helmut, are you looking forward to to this competition? Yes, definitely. Uh, I was not taking part in the last laugh bite, but I was like uh, seeing the results. And I think from the high end procedural GFX and 256 bytes for for the high end at least, I think the top 10 is like you can you can show them to other people outside the scene and be like look at this it has been done in 256 bytes they are all marvelous like i would have a hard time to to choose what has won like they are all so good it's it's, it's crazy like people have now understood what's possible and they are developing like uh, to 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 push the limits and i think we don't have reached we didn't reach the limit yet so i'm really looking forward to this one it's it will, will be uh, astounding i think yeah i think so too gigabytes what about you uh, yeah, it's not something I've taken part in myself before, but it's, yeah, the stuff that people are doing is incredible. So, yeah, really looking forward to seeing it. 
Then at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll have a DJ set by Washek of uh, Arise. Uh, they did a specific uh, set just focusing using tiny, tiny uh, SIDs. All the SIDs that were used were below 1 kilobyte. Uh, it's promising to be really, really good. Hope you check it out. Then starting at 7, going all the way up to 10 in the evening, we'll have the first major block of competitions. 32-byte intro competition, 64-byte, 128-byte, and 512-byte. For both the old-school platforms and the high-end platforms, tons of different competitions here. A lot of interesting things for different sizes. Uh, which one are you most looking forward to of all of these? I, I would put, I think... Uh, for me, 128 bytes will be really good, especially on uh, on uh, old school platforms, and uh, 512 bytes uh, because I really like seeing what what people can do with the slightly more space than usual. But let me know your thoughts on each one of them. Helmut, which one is your is your favorite one? Are you targeting any of them for the for the Batathlon as well? Yeah, I think I will send like the the lowest categories. I, I have not much, not done much in the recent uh, months, but I think I will try to uh, aim for 16, 32, 64, and 128, and get something going. Like rather particip participating than competing. But anyway, sending something I think is fine. And I'm looking forward to 128 because I think, like from my experience, I have done a lot of 32 and 64. I know where the limits are, so. I don't think I will be surprised by anything I see, just more like, oh, well done or something. But 128 is the region where, again, I do not excel that mu that much. So there's the room to explore stuff. There can be amazing concepts can be done there, like combinations of effects from 64 and 32 uh, with sound, for example, 3D engines like that, fractal engines, uh, anything like that. So I'm looking forward to that uh, most, to the 128. And still, I'm like interested in watching all the competitions, of course, because <laughs> I've done them myself. So so often but the most exciting for me would be definitely the 128 byte competition yeah i was gonna say last year we had a, a couple of very good 128 byte intros with sound so it's definitely possible to squeeze some stuff usually you see only sound on 256 bytes but 128 is definitely possible and on old school machines even you even have a little bit more uh, room we've seen a lot of interesting stuff like for the atari on even uh, lower uh, byte counts so uh really looking forward to that That's gigabytes nice. what about what about you uh from the 32 byte intro 64 byte intro 128 or 512 bytes uh which are the ones that are going to happen on saturday night which are the ones that you're most looking forward to i would assume 512 byte because it has you know amiga boot blocks are allowed there and you're all you're you're very amiga fanboy as far as i could tell <laughs> definitely yeah so yeah hoping there's some more amiga entries this year last last year there was a couple including myself so i i, I think there might be a few more people interested this year so really really excited to see see that yep what yeah. about the 32 64 and 128 do you have uh, are you planning anything for them are you looking forward to them um yeah, I might, I might have something for, for one of the smaller categories as well. So, yeah. Uh, at 11, we will have a DJ set by Wayland. And uh, then at midnight, we'll have a night program. Uh, then on Sunday, we'll have the final uh, big highlight uh, ending of the party. Morning realization at 10 a.m. as usual, followed up by myself giving you the second part of the of the year in size coding. At 11 in the morning, we'll have the Extreme ZX Spectrum size coding uh, seminar prepared by uh, Super Rogo, featuring the Basmatic tool developed by Gasman to do some uh, live coding things uh, for assembler of the Z80. Midday, we'll have the 16-byte intro competitions. 16 bytes is ridiculous. You can't do anything. I'll say like 8 bytes, you do some noise. 16 bytes, you can barely do slightly more than noise. Helmut, I think you've done a couple of them. So how the hell can you do something minimally interesting in 16 bytes? Uh, one word, magic. Uh, no, 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 I'm kidding. It's There are a, a tiny like uh, mathematical uh, formulas which allow for very tiny programs, like mostly fractals or linear congruence operators, like, or for example, noise, or you can like, you can switch on the PC speaker in four bytes and DOS at, at least it will just have a deep meh note or something. So you can have sound, like sound, you know, in four sound bytes. Sound in 16 bytes? 
It's, it's, yes, it's possible. Yes. Uh, also, you can have some tiny animations uh, if you have just imagine just a mini shader. You have like your location on the screen with X and Y, and then you can combine them. Like you can add them up, you can multiply them, you can do you can XOR. do uh, XOR. You can like do a, a radius, like the Euclidean distance or something. You can think around something. It's it's possible actually. Yes. It's definitely possible. We'll have a slot for it for people to present their stuff. <laughs> yes. so let's see how interesting it is. Uh, Gigabase, have you ever tried anything 16 bytes or is that way too small for you? Yeah, I mean, kind of envious of the DOS people being able to do stuff in that kind of size because on Amiga, you know, you've got some instructions that are 10 bytes. So <laughs> it's a bit more of a challenge. But that's not to say it's not possible. Everything's possible, right? Right. At one, we'll have the ZX Spectrum live coding jam, uh, putting up Super Rogue against the uh, Gasman using the Basmatic tool that was uh, explained or showcased during the seminar. At uh, two in the afternoon, we'll have the nano game competition, which is the challenge is to do a video game, uh, something that is interactive, keeps a score in 256 bytes. And there's some interest in this, especially when the, you know the game the game development community is so big that there's usually a few uh, interesting games being uh, thrown at this category as well, despite the small size in this. Uh, Helmut, do you have any interest in this category? Uh, looking forward to see any of the productions? Uh, yeah, I still owe Sentin style a uh, combined game. Like we we planned the collaboration for years now, but we didn't finish it. So I have seen other people do amazing things. Like uh, Jojola had a Tetris clone in 256. Uh, I think Board Server tried himself with an incomplete chess game in 256. <laughs> I, it wasn't chess, but you know, it was a it was a still a playing engine with text with bugs or whatever. But it, it was still an engine, something like that. And there's are uh, shooters, I think, and a box pusher game, like where you watch on top of a game and somebody pushes boxes and you have to find an exit or something or push yeah, a box to a location. Yeah. So this stuff is possible. So I'm actually, you know, not really hyped, but uh, I know what's possible. So I will like throw throw an eye on it and just see what, what happens there. Yeah. Can be a pleasant Ge result. Gigabits, what about you? Are you looking forward to any game stuff? Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Again, it's not something I've attempted. It sounds impossible, but like you say, Stuff's getting done. People have managed to achieve really incredible stuff. So, yeah. Especially, I think, for the old school platforms, we have seen some interesting uh, games coming up in very small sizes. So I'm interested in, in seeing what's come up, what comes out of those. Continuing with the schedule at 3, we'll have a DJ set by our Swedish friend Syntax Error Stockholm uh, featuring artist Fastbomb. At uh, 3.50, we'll have uh, a bunch of 256 second long uh, seminars, which is a feature that we have returned this year. And we have some interesting things that were submitted for this. And at 4 p.m. we'll have the tiny pixel graphics competition. 512 pixels on the EGA palette. Uh, and we had quite a lot of entries uh, last year for this competition. Last year, we it was using the CGA palette, if I'm not mistaken. This year is on EGA, so slightly different, but I think also quite interesting. And we've, as I mentioned, there's a lot of things that, that uh, you can do. Uh, you can... Put the pixels vertically you can put them uh, horizontally you can do a square as long as it's 512 pixels all of it is allowed and we've seen a lot of uh, very interesting uh, things being submitted uh, on the previous year so i'm very interested to see what will come uh, come out of it uh, helmut any particular expectations for this competition Yes, still one of those compos uh, where I think my, my head gets blown off because the only thing I came ever up with was like doing flags with pixels, like you know, all the three striped <laughs> flags. That was the only thing I can do. And the actual artist came up with something and I was just sitting there with my with my jaw on the floor. I was like, what the fuck? How how do they do that? Like, how does it look so real? Like a vase, like a vase, for example, with reflections on it or like faces, like it's it's incredible. Like this is something I can still, you know, uh, rest my case, not compete, just enjoy <laughs> what I see because it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, Gigabytes, what about you? Are you looking forward to some tiny pixel art? Yeah, so yeah, I've had a little go at this one and I know a lot of other people have, so I think there's gonna be a lot of entries and it's the one that's, yeah, it's a bit more accessible and kind of draw people into it. So it's, it's definitely a good thing. At five, all the way from Australia with love, we'll have C Tricks with eight different musical devices and computers with floppy drives united in sharing a single 720k double density floppy. So everything made with a single floppy, an entire set promises to be awesome. I hope you check it out. 
Then at 7 we'll have the Wild Showcase, anything that doesn't quite fit the myriads of uh, tiny intro competitions that we have. You could submit it to this specific category and we'll show you uh, on the live stream for everyone to enjoy. And then at 8 we'll have the 1 kilobyte intro competition for both the old school and high end platforms. It's a new new time that we have. It's the first time that we have it at Love Byte. Um, it's been popular mostly at Assembly, uh, and we mostly be seeing some JavaScript uh, shader stuff uh, there. This year is also open for old school. Um, here at Love Byte, we have both the old school and the uh, high end 1K intro competition. So probably we'll have a mix of DOS stuff. Uh, fantasy console stuff and um, and the uh, shader, JavaScript shader things happening on the 1K. It's going to be slightly different from the rest of the of the tiny size coding of the party, but I think it should be quite interesting as well because it opens up the possibilities quite a lot. For you, Helmut, you said that like 1K is like yeah, infinite it's, amount it's of much. potential. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too much for me. I could like cram, I don't know how many effects in there, but uh, I'm eager to see that because it opens also uh, possibilities up for the byte athlon because it's possible to have uh, 100, uh, so, sorry, 1024 and uh, 512, 256 and 128. So it's a lot more accessible in the means of uh, programming because there are more people who can do it. And it also it widens the uh, candidates for, for the byte athlon because I think like Poi or Seven from, from the famous 1K coders could be easily doing like some alibi 128 um, tick 80 productions and still, you know, compete for the byte athlon. So it's going to be interesting, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Gigabytes, what about you? Are you looking forward to the 1K? Are you doing anything for the 1K? Um, I don't think I'm doing anything for it. I definitely remember last year, this is the one where things start to look very different. You see things that look a lot more like a kind of traditional intro than the side scale stuff, which, you know, I think it's a good thing. Probably shouldn't go any higher than that, though. I think this is this is definitely where we need to draw the limit, yeah. isn't it? Uh, Super Rogue was already very skeptic on uh, having 1K, but we ended up having it uh, last year as an experiment, and it kind of went okay. Uh, we had some interesting uh, stuff. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. It's more traditional demo scene, that's for sure, uh, than the the tiny size coding. Although although size coding has been around in the demo scene for years as well. But I mean, when you say demo scene, you usually think of more, you know, cinematic composed things than uh, than just uh, smaller tiny intros we'll have at 9 p.m the highlights of the party which is the 256 byte intro competition both for high school uh, both for old school and uh, high end uh, slash fantasy consoles and this one should be like the killer compo. I mean, uh, on the previous years we always had some amazing 256 bytes it's been the the limitation or the the, the platform that uh, that most people have been aiming at there's a lot of known like what is the potential of the size but we always somehow manage to find a few people who break the the limit and do some mind-blowing stuff helmut you want to say something about that <coughs> Uh, I'm looking forward to it because, like you said, it will be packed with, with all the entries. Like uh, Tick80 is very, very capable of doing amazing stuff there. Like I, from the top of my head, I remember the the animation of the tree from from Ilmenit in in the Tick80 that was like crazy. And uh, I think that wasn't even the ceiling of what you can do. So it will be packed with DOS coders and with Tick80 coders, and I think old school as well uh, will be will be amazing. I'm not competing in this one. I don't have. A, at so, so, many, so much time to do it uh, and the, the field will be stacked it will be something uh, i will enjoy just uh, sitting and and um and watching and hopefully get get something like uh, one of the uh, outstanding um productions from the last years yes I mean, if you and if you're competing for the Pythathlon, I think it's a bit of inevitable that you do the 256 bytes. So we'll, we'll see a few of the people doing for the Pythathlon having some intros here at 256 bytes. Uh, I, I guess I should. Uh, we'll talk about Pythathlon in, in a little while afterwards. Uh, Gigabytes, any thoughts on the 256 bytes? Yeah. So last time it was definitely one of the more popular categories. There were loads of entries. So hopefully. It'll be a lot to see again, some really high standard of entries and looking forward to it.
then we'll have a little break and at 11 30 we'll do the results show with myself and uh, genio providing some uh, music entertainment along so it's not not just me reading some uh, a long list of results and hopefully we'll have a dj set to round up uh, the evening still to be confirmed but we hope to have some uh, some entertainment for you to go throughout the rest of sunday evening so that's the schedule that we have planned up for you. A uh, lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Uh, we already talked about most of these uh, things. Uh, there are new this year, uh, the Tiny Executable Music Competition, which should be very interesting. The 1K uh, intro compo that also changed things a little bit from last year. Uh, the Tiny Executable Graphics, which is now on uh, each EA. Uh, the showcases are the another of the highlights of the of the party as well. We have a showcase dedicated to eight bytes and uh, wild, where you can submit whatever you want. I think last year we didn't have the wild showcase, if I'm not mistaken. So that that's going to be interesting as well. Uh, Byte Athlon. We should talk about the Byte Athlon. So uh, Byte Athlon is a special award that we will give uh, people who get the most points uh, from participating in four consecutive categories. So they need to be connected in size. It's not just for overall, it needs to be for adjacent. So if you do 64 bytes, uh, 128, 156, 512, you are considered for the byte athlon. And uh, you can also shift around. You can do slightly smaller, go all the way to uh, 32, I think, is the is the lowest combo we have. <coughs> or you can go all the way up to uh, 1K. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what people can do for that. Um, Helmut, uh, you tried to participate, you even won in 2022. Uh, are you planning to participate again this year? Uh, yes, I will try to participate. I will not call it compete because I, I don't have much time these days, but I have still stuff lying around and can tinker something together, whatever. I just uh, thought, why not compete? So I will aim for 16, 32, 64, 128. I still have stuff to do, but this is the region where I, I will, will, will send something. And I'm looking forward to the higher categories, actually, because I'm... I'm interested in if people don't have to tinker around that much with assembly instructions, like I could imagine like somebody's doing a TIG 80, pure TIG 80 stuff and going for the highest categories like 128, 256, 512 and 10, uh, 1024. So it will be very interesting, like I said before, like to open up the Bytathlon uh, field of candidates to more people because they don't have to learn something they never did, like tinkering with assembly, for example. So now every coder basically can step in and uh, send something and have a have a shot to the title this is like uh, exciting to me like having multiple contenders in this in this regard yeah definitely i uh, doing a tick 80 thing in 128 bytes is doable but you can't really do much out of it so um eh, but you know you lose some points so you maybe you want to try ms dos for that i don't know uh gigabytes what about you are you considering the bytathlon i don't think I'll be doing it this year. And also, one thing to point out: last year I thought I was competing, but the point I missed was they had to be consecutive sizes on the same platform. Oh, that's yeah. all they get yeah. you. That's that was how they you. got me. So <laughs> might be making that mistake again. So yeah, that, that um, I did win old school one. That that kind of screwed up my my streak on it. So they weren't um, they didn't qualify. But yeah, also some people uh, think that the nano game also is considered on 256 bytes, and then it's not. So it's it's uh, it's complicated. But yeah, um, quick recap of the ones that won uh, the previous years in 2021. Ilmanit won the old school, and Jola won the high end. Uh, then in 2022, Ilmanit won the old school again, and Helmut there uh, won the high end and then last year we had f ready winning old school with some atari stuff and me crisp the high end with the uh, risk v oscilloscope stuff if you remember that which was quite interesting um moving on to the next segment is the nano awards so nano awards nano awards is um an award, obviously, that we give to the best uh, size coding productions from the previous year. So uh, during December we and a little bit of January, we opened up uh, DemoZoo for you to submit your nominees of the total productions that were released in the year in, si in tiny size coding. Uh, I think the maximum was 1K. Um, 
you could nominate them for the different categories, old school, high end and fantasy console. And then we'll have uh, the the voting open for you during Love Byte, uh, public voting for you to decide what is the best demo or uh, tiny intro from uh, from last year. And uh, I have the nominees here uh, listed, which I will quickly go over if I can click things. So for the old school category, uh, we have nominated 256 by bottles of rum, which only got sixth place at Love Byte uh, last year, but it was for the Commodore 64. It was a 256 byte intro for the Commodore 64, and a lot of people found it very uh, interesting. Especially because it was not for the Commodore 64, we, and we don't see a lot of tiny size coding for the Commodore 64. I think there was a lot of the appeal on it. It also had like a narrative uh, into it. And we had Algo Rift, uh, which won uh, Summer Hack, uh, being nominated. Aurum Argentum, uh, made by F. Freddy, uh, that won Love Bite. Entangler, which was also participating at Love Bite. And uh, Throwing Shapes, uh, that was also in Love Bite, but for, uh, by Gigabytes here. So, uh, Gigabytes, you're nominated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess, Gigabytes, the question is for you. Well, what do you think of the of these uh, nominees? I, uh, who do you think is going to win? All that stuff. And consider that people will still be voting, so uh, try not to be <laughs> <laughs> too biased. Don't don't say vote yeah. for me. <laughs> vote for me? No, don't vote for me. Um, that's they're all great entries. There's yeah, really really high standard of stuff this year. I don't know which way it's going to go, but yeah, it's really impressive. Stuff and a lot around. of variety in terms of platforms. Like we have stuff for mm. the Commodore sixty four, for the Atari ST, for the Atari eight bit, uh, for the ZX Spectrum, and for Amiga. So completely different platforms. It's going to be very mm. hard to compare one against the other. So uh, very much interested in seeing what comes out of that. Um, Helmut, do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, sure. So I watched all of these. Uh, I'm not that old school guy, but I'm still interested in what people come up with. Like you mentioned, the Commodore 64 one uh, should be like included as a nominee because it's so rare to see one of those, and it is pretty decent. Uh, then uh, Algor Rift, uh, like. Um, was pretty cool because it wasn't it was i know the effect it's an ray march basically with a simple geometry but it wasn't on an atari and this is uh, crazy to pull off i think and it even had music and then from gigabates uh, who i don't know for long because he's like having his, his appearance in the scene uh, throwing shapes i found that pretty um uh, enlightening like to, to have the sounds and the variations it sounded really good i mean the graphics were obviously not so sophisticated but it looked like so nice and sounded so nice it gave me a good feeling and again it's hard to judge because one of the effects has 64 bytes like the arab argentum and the other has 512 and 556 so it's a it's a tough call to make so i have two favorites like here like algorithm and throwing shapes would be my favorites but i couldn't make the call because it's like different platforms and different sizes so it's it's hard to tell i love the music yeah. and throwing shapes by the way yeah yeah, very hard to to decide on that one. I'm very interested to see what people will vote on, and we'll have the results being announced uh, during the results show of the rest of Love Bite. Uh, then for the high end uh, category, we had Atlantis, Crevice, and Gaia: Poetry of Life. All three of the top three from Revision 2023, which was a very good uh, competition uh, overall. So I'm not surprised to see them uh, nominated. So we'll have a reprise of the competition and see if uh, the test of time has changed the, the the standings. And then rounding up the top five nominations, we had Hell Maze by Seven Dump, which was released at uh, QB Party, uh, 256 bytes for MS DOS with some uh, very good maze uh, voxel maze uh, rendering. And uh, Into the Light by Pestis of Brainless, uh, 128 bytes released at uh, Love Byte as well. That won the 128 byte intro combo here. So Helmut, uh, you're a bit suspect because you're participating with Atlantis. But uh, what uh, do you think of the combo? Overall? I can, yeah, I can clearly say don't vote for me because I don't think it's it's the best one of those. So don't vote for me. It's like it it also came third in revision. So and rightfully so, I think because the other ones were were better. So. Uh, you know, don't vote for me. But the other <laughs> four, I I think I have a slight favorite there because you know I know the techniques. Uh, all of them have some kind of ray marching or ray casting in them with more or less simple geometries, and the pedits that have that have been used are known to me. But I think uh, the Helme stood uh, not not because of the name, <laughs> but the Helme stood uh, stood out to me because it looked different in a way. And it was coded by by bits of Seven Dump, who like I didn't even know he could do that. So. 
Yeah, I was impressed, but so to see somebody in the scene, I've seen him on the forums and posting stuff here and there, and then he just comes out of nothing with with a hell maze, and it looked it looked cool and it's so smooth. So this is my favorite from from all those. Uh, followed closely f uh, f by by Gaia from from Maki Design. Uh, and then we have Crevice and Into the Light. Both of them are very similar in concept, like uh, visually, the, or they both have sound very minimalistic, but both have 128 bytes, so very similar concept. So uh, what do you think about that, Hellboy? So uh, the, the ray marching algorithm and its uh, realization in uh, x86 is like known uh, at this point. So while it's still impressive to see somebody coming up with another variant of it, like not copying code, but understanding the concept and realizing it. It's uh, not as outstanding, I think, as the rest. So they are very close, but uh, like um, the, these is nowadays, I think the typical raycasters in 128, which can win a combo, but which uh, I think in my, in my book don't win an award for in this category. Sadly, like we have advanced as a scene, so now you expect something brilliant as that to be like, okay, it's it's a it's a well perceived nominee. Yeah, that that speaks a little bit to like um, what we expect from the size limit already. Like one hundred and twenty eight bytes already seems a bit overexplored in that regard, while two hundred fifty six bytes still seems like it can be surprising in some ways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <coughs> Uh, then we have the Fantasy Console uh, nominees, uh, A Cold Night by Luchak, which got, won the Get Ready uh, competition, uh, Terrain Spotting by Yuki Gigabates that won uh, at Love Bite, To Roll But Gold that won at Inertia, Faros by Marty Design who won at Evoke, and then Venera uh, who got second place at Love Bite uh, made by Poi as well. All of them very interesting, good different um, range of platforms. We have Pico 8, we have TKD, we have Micro W8, so good different representation in that regard. Hard to pick a favorite out of these, uh, to tell you the truth. I'm leaning a bit towards Fados because I'm not... But I, at the same time, I'm not really... I think Micro W8 has slight advantage compared to the other fantasy consoles in terms of uh, quality, size optimization, performance, because it, it relies on, on some... Um, web assembly and and uh, shader based stuff uh i think it's really hard to compare um any thoughts on this gigabytes do you have any favorites besides your own yeah i mean you're right comparing across platforms is really difficult i think that's going to be interesting to see across all of the categories how people manage that comparing quite quite different entries for, for different platforms but but they're all great productions so yeah uh, Helmut, what about you? What do you think about uh, the Fantasy Console nominees? Uh, first of all, it's nice to see that uh, this category uh, has now a distinction of its own because there are so many people doing stuff for it and it's, it's all uh, pretty awesome to me. Uh, I can still uh, spot a favorite for me, even if they are close. And this would be Tehran spotting from uh, Gigabates. And it was also the intro that put uh, his name on the map for me. I was like, what, what is this? It's looking it's looking gorgeous. And who is that guy? <laughs> like, okay, and now I'm sitting in a, in a, in a podcast with him. <laughs> Hello. So um, it was something I, I planned to do at one point because I figured the, the palette is uh, suited for having a landscape. Uh, I did these Earth, Earth view stuff recently for, for MS-DOS in, in 32, like just exploring the, the palette, like going from water to the to the meadows to the mountains pretty much. And I thought like TIC-80 is uh, suitable to do that too. And th there it is, and I can cross it off my list now because somebody has done it, and uh, in a very, in a very uh, efficient and brilliant way. So this is my uh, favorite of of those uh, nominees by a tiny bit towards the others. Yes. Yeah, TK the palette is very nice to do those yes. kind of uh, nature yes. scenes. He has the greens, he has the blues, and both of them have range in them, so it's it's is very easy to to use. We are wrapping up uh, the opening show. Hope you found it interesting. Hope you're very excited for the rest of uh, Love Bite that's still uh, to come. Uh, I know I definitely am. A lot of work has been put into this. I want to thank everybody who's been helping uh, organize Love Bite and, of course, everybody who's been submitting productions for the event. I hope you everyone has a great time during this uh, weekend. And yeah, let's enjoy some some tiny size intro stuff. Uh, any final words before we wrap up, uh, Gigabits? Good luck, everyone. 
<laughs> Very good enough. Helmut, any final words of wisdom for everybody watching? Uh, just enjoy. Enjoy. Okay, that's it. Enjoy, everybody. Have a great party. See you around.